But you're not the first person to use media in ministry. Actually, you started um, a, found, uh, a company called the John Paul II Media Institute. Just uh, give me a bit of an idea about that. It came out. Uh, the idea for the Media Institute really came from uh, well, my own conviction about the, the, the responsibility and the need to use media to communicate experiences and to communicate our, our message. And it struck me, I, I was kind of self-taught when I was producing material for different groups and, and on, on my spare time. And I realized, well, I'm now getting more demands than I, can, than I can respond to. And if I can teach myself, I can probably teach others. That was the seminal moment. And uh, I, I basically cast the vision for people. And we had a couple of partners got on board and we got some basic funding. And we went from there. And basically through our productions, and through the sales of the stuff we produce, we've grown and we, we would reinvest in getting an extra camera and an extra mm -hmm. edit suite and we just built up. And so now we're, we're basically running as a, as a production house and uh, we have a staff, of, a couple of full-time staff and a few part-time staff and we're moving into a new office next week. We're moving uh, uh, out of one basement into another basement, but it's a nicer yeah. basement. And um, it's growing, and it's been just an incredible work of God, and, and mm -hmm. it's really amazing to, to see what, what's happening. So right. it's exciting. It, it keeps us busy, you know, because it's a mm -hmm. bit of a day job or a bit of a, mm -hmm. something on the side. But I'm convinced that we've got to keep doing this. We've got to go forward. Right. You have such an incredible story yourself. Um, can you just, first of all, tell us, I mean, so many of us see, see priests, but we don't know the story behind what brings a person to make a decision to become a priest? What happened in your life? Well, I grew up in a kind of a traditional Catholic home. Faith was important to us. We never missed Sunday Mass. Uh, always had to say my prayers before I went to bed. I had moments in my childhood where I, where I look back now and I see that uh, what I would call experiences of God, very powerful ones. And uh, But in my teen years, I strayed from God. And God, in many ways, became very, very distant to me. Um, kind of a, a guy in the clouds with a big stick. And in my teenage years, although I always did well at school, I got involved in a lot of uh, teenage uh, extracurricular activities, mm -hmm. uh, which were not always uh, good things, and got into a bit of trouble in my life. And at that moment, um, it was my father who kind of made, made me go on this retreat weekend. It was a part of the Crucial movement. Some of the viewers may, may have heard about that. And on that weekend, I had uh, a life-changing experience. I had an experience of, of, a powerful experience of God's unconditional love that, that just really changed my life. I mean, it was so powerful. It was, I could go back to that room and say, this is where I was sitting when this, ex when this happened to me. It was the beginning of, of a real growth period over the next year where I slowly realized that experiencing the love of God has an implication and a claim for your life. And so... For the next year, I slowly began to submit parts of my life to, to, to God because I still lived a bit of a wild life, even though I'd had this experience. Uh, last year of high school, I met this young lady who I end up I would go out with for about two years, and she was uh, uh, from a Reformed background, and she had a very strong faith, and she kind of she didn't quite read the riot act to me, but she, she did in a very quiet, gentle way. And through the Holy Spirit and her witness, I really came to a complete surrender to Christ in my life and began to pray uh, every day, began to read, read, read the scripture. Uh, she would actually ask me a lot of questions about, you Catholics, why do you believe this? And, and like it, most typical Catholics, I didn't have a clue. So I started to read and that began to feed my faith. And uh, at this point I was uh, in uh, university, I was in a pre-med uh, stream. And um, Easter Sunday of that first year at school, I had an experience during Mass where it's very hard to describe, but basically in the middle of Mass, out of nowhere, I just had this, this infilling of God's Spirit and a, and, a, and a conviction. All of a sudden I knew I was going to be a priest. And, and I had never in a million years ever wanted to be or thought about it. Uh, and this, par this experience was so powerful that it really, uh, I thought I was going to explode. I, I began to weep. It was so overpowering. And I left church that day and I, I did a Jonah. I, I ran. <laughs> I, I took the experience, I tried to bury it, and I tried to run the other way. And I started to make deals with God about going into full-time ministry as a married man. As yes. long as I could take my <laughs> wife with me, I came up with all of these schemes and proposed them to, to, to God. But uh, for some reason, He pursued me in this particular uh, direction. And as much as I tried to run away from it, 
No, it's, I, it's I could because it's inside of you. It, right? it, exactly, it was within, and and um, it was a real struggle. It was a very very difficult struggle. But finally, in that fall, the next fall, I came to a, a very powerful experience of surrender, uh, and uh, I ended the, the the relationship with this young young lady and and uh, began preparations to go into the seminary. And uh, that's basically the story that got me into the seminary. That was I had eight years of formation after that before I was mm -hmm. ordained a priest. I've been a priest for 13 years, and the story continues because nice. every day of our Christian lives, we've got to re-surrender to Christ. Yeah. I experience that all the time, all the time. We've got to recommit. We've got to allow. Uh, I was just reading on my iPhone an email. Uh, it was a story from a talk that Pope Benedict gave yesterday, and he said that the, the priest every day must allow Christ to conquer his heart, his very life. And um, that's the part of it. It's, it's a daily struggle. Any believer in Christ knows that we've got to daily surrender to Him and allow Him to reconquer our hearts and our minds. Right. And so the story continues. Right. And so many people, when they think of a priest, they, they count the cost, you know, this idea of, you know, what is it going to cost me to be a priest or, or to totally surrender my life to God? There but is you cost have... in following Christ. <laughs> Jesus says, if you want to be my disciple, take up your cross every day and follow me. The question is not, oh, where is there not a cross? The question is, which cross is the Lord calling you to take? I mean, though anyone who's married knows that there's a cross to being married. Mm -hmm. It's not easy to be married, to, to raise a family. There, there's, there's a real cross in that, and, and yet this is the call of, of being a disciple. And we know that the cross is a cross only because it leads to resurrection. And, uh, and, and that's the mystery of the Christian life, the dying and rising. And it's in any vocation. If we try to run from the cross, we're going to run from Christ. Um, and but it's only through the cross that we have life as well. Right. But there's a blessing too in that cross, isn't there? Absolutely, absolutely. There's a blessing, and I, you know, sure. There's. Um, I like to say it's not every day that I'm jumping up and down to be a priest, but uh, I jump up and down about being a priest more than I complain about being a priest. <laughs> but, I, but I have those when yeah. I have those difficult days. So um, yeah, it, it's a, it's a, it's been a it's, it's been a wonderful journey so far. I've been. In priestly ministry for 13 years, there are certainly challenges because right now the church needs renewal, and uh, you can go into a parish as, as, a, as a new priest, full of zeal and enthusiasm, and you run into church culture, and it can be like hitting a brick wall. Mm -hmm. And 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 there's always that temptation to to just, you know, preach and be a minister of a of a comfortable gospel that doesn't call us to change or to reform or anything like that. And and that's always that's always a tension within our nice comfy lives because sometimes we've, we've tended to make Christ and the gospel uh, a, a very just a, a nice neighbor a nice part of our mm -hmm. lives that helps us to feel comfortable and I don't think that's quite the message of the gospel really right so the adventure continues it continues and it is an adventure a real adventure thanks so much for sharing with us father James Mallon